of God. Hallelujah. Today, I want to give you guys an encouragement. I want to speak to the ladies who have a vision, have a dream, who have stepped forth in faith and has pushed towards obedience, even just like myself and even Prophetess Millicent has done. And I want to take you to the point where um, it encourages you past your brokenness. Sometimes we get broken in this lifetime. Sometimes we get broken in this process. Hallelujah. It's not an easy one. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When God calls you to do something, especially when he calls you to a mandate that is big, bigger than life itself, the enemy doesn't like it. And he will try everything in his power to stop you from obtaining the blessings of God, from pushing forward and receiving the destiny that was laid out and planned out for you, even before you were born. And I'm here to encourage you because even though God calls us to great and wonderful things, that does not eliminate the process that we have to go through in our lifetime. Yes, you may climb the mountain. You may see uh, 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 the vision and where you are at the very top, at the very peak. But let me ensure you of something, that climbing that mountain may be a struggle at times. You may even fall or trip at times. You may encounter challenges that will, that will discourage you from even pursuing on that journey. But let me tell you something today. God will never give you more than you can bear. He will never take you to something that he will not promise to take you through it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I myself have a testimony. I'm still going through my process. But even to get to this point that God has taken me and allowed me to achieve, it was a process and it still is. Glory to God. There were times that I was so discouraged. There were times where the enemy blatantly attacked my purpose and my destiny. He used all manners of things to do it. He used people, things, finances, struggles, health difficulties. But God consistently reminded me throughout this process that he would never leave me. He would never forsake me. He would never give up on me if I would hold on to his unchanging hand. Women of God, I come to encourage you in this moment and this season that we're going through. There's so much going on in our world today. There's so many problems, so many situations that seems unbearable. Some people have even had to shut down their ministries. They're no longer able to assemble together in the fashion in which they were doing before. But I'm here to tell you that even when the doors of the world shut on you, that God is faithful and he will not turn his back on you. If you hold on, if you have faith, let me tell you about something King David, I, I, I have been teaching on King David for a couple of uh, weeks on the Morning Breeze Live series. And King David shows a wonderful example of what it means to go through the process with grace. Hallelujah. Many times we, we, we have the ideas in our head and the ideals of, of, of how we want to do things. And, and, and this picture and this wonderful image that we have often is conflicted by the realities that we experience in life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God gives us a vision of great health and prosperity and healing. He even gives us a vision of being able to lay hands on the sick and heal others. And yet we ourselves experience sickness. These are conflicting situations that oftentimes causes us to question, God, is this for real? God, did you really call me? 
God, what is it that you're trying to say to me personally? As a person of faith, how do I trust you when I cannot see the miracles happening for myself? Oh, But I'm coming to tell you, I'm coming to encourage you today. That even though the enemy may try to give an illusion before you. So that you will give up all your hope in the dreams and the promises that God has laid on you. Don't fall into that temptation. Don't fall for that trap. Hallelujah. Glory to God. King David, before he was appointed as king, he was anointed. And some of us have to come to the realization that sometimes the anointing doesn't necessarily mean that that time and place is the appointment. Glory to God. Can I get a witness tonight? Hallelujah. Glory to God. When God anoints us, he gives us a process to take us to the journey so that we will fully develop and mature into the person that he needs us to be when we assume the position. Glory to God. And what we need to recognize is that every aspect, every step of the way is integral for us to endure. I, sp I preached a message a while back called She Endured. Glory to God. It was speaking about Hannah and how she had to go through a lot of, 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 of taunting and, 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 and tempting and, and, and anguish and pain just to get her promise, which was her, her, her baby boy, Samuel, who by the fact was the one who anointed King David. Glory to God. And if she gave up at that time in that moment, if she did not endure the process, then she would never receive her miracle. Hallelujah, glory to God. And sometimes God is just asking us to endure that processing. Hallelujah. To endure the pain a little bit more, to endure the suffering a little bit more, so that we may, will be able to see the promise. We will be able to get the blessing. Hallelujah, glory to God. We will be able to have a testimony worth telling. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is what we have to remember, women of God. Hallelujah. That we must endure. As I was saying, King David, before he was appointed, he was anointed. And this anointing allowed him to access doors that nobody else could access. He was given the position to play the harp for the king, which was King Saul at the time. Something that he had to have an anointing to do. Glory to God. He was anointed to play so skillfully so that it would alleviate King Saul of his disposition, of his anguish. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell many of you tonight that you are anointed. Hallelujah. To alleviate some of the dispositions that this world has. To alleviate some of the problems and the stress that this world has. You are the answer to that problem. Glory to God. And so God is going to open up the doors of access for you. The gates of promise will be opened for you. That other people will not be able to access. Glory to God. Favor will reign upon you because the anointing will locate you. It will find you and it will expose you to that which you need to be exposed to. Glory to God. The word of God says that your gifts and your talents makes way for it brings you before great men. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so I decree that and I declare that over your life. But as you go through these gates of promise... Remember that it is not without test and trial. David, before he was appointed, went through a situation where the king that he alleviated of his problem became his very first and, and his most gravest enemy. He became the one that pursued him to take his life. But David never stopped pushing and serving faithfully. He continued to honor King Saul as his king. He continued to honor God with his promise. 
He continued to, to understand that if God said it, it must come to pass, no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation. Glory to God. And even when King Saul tried to pursue David and to take his life, he trusted God. And David wrote these Psalms. And we can see the anguish and the pain that he went through as he suffered while on his journey. And I'm going to read Psalms 34 verses 4 to 8. It says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look at him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. The angels of the Lord encamp around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Glory to God. I get excited when I hear these words of confidence, of these words of assurance. God will never leave us. We will have to endure the process. We will go to heartache and pain. When you have greatness inside of you, there is everything that you have to go through because the enemy does not want you to succeed. Hallelujah. And as women, we endure so many things with our homes, with our families, with our jobs. We endure so many things. But we must not give up. We must not give up on hope. Hallelujah. There is a hope in God when you take refuge in him. There is a hope in God when you take trust in him. And so I want to encourage you to keep on holding on. We always hear the old mothers of the church say that. Keep on holding on. Hallelujah. No matter what it seems like it's coming your way. Hallelujah. Don't let go of the banner. Hallelujah. I myself have a testimony. I've been through so many trials. I've been through situations with my health that only God can heal me and has healed me. I've been through situations in relationships, discouragements, disappointments, abuse from so many angles, the, the direct attack against who I was as a woman of God. It came to break me. It came to destroy me. There were times that I didn't even want to live any longer. The pressure and the burden was so heavy that I rathered for the Lord to take my life. But God said, not so, my daughter. God said, just give me the reins. Give me a try. Give me the weight and the load. Let me handle it for you. Sometimes we try to figure out the situation by ourselves, but know that we can't. But if we give God everything he will handle it for us and we will come out on top glory to god that is my encouragement to you be blessed once again i want to thank prophetess millicent edmondson for giving us the opportunity to share the word of god tonight and to encourage our sisters in the faith who are leading and taking on the mantle god bless you this is Reverend Natalie E. Sharp from Morning Breeze Broadcast. Join me on Facebook. Look it up. I am there every week bringing forth the word of God. God bless you. Have a good one. Bye.